everyone, Justin from the Rap Institute, and welcome to round 17 of the Never Stop Learning Contest. Love this contest because you get a chance to win an awesome prize from the sponsor of the round, and the sponsor of this round is KPMF. And you have a chance to win a roll of their color change film at a value of around $700, and you can choose any one of these amazing colors. Awesome stuff. Great for color change on vehicles. But I won't be wrapping a vehicle in this one. I'll be wrapping a tool cabinet. Really awesome because you can take color change film and in this case I'm actually going to be using one of their specialty over laminates as well. So this is a little sparkle. Took a basically a gloss blue pearl and made it super sparkly. You're going to wrap this cabinet. So if you can guess how long it takes me to wrap this cabinet you win that roll of color change film. So you're going to see lots of great tips and tricks how to form an extra thick film because it's laminated around these corners get in over these recessed areas and raised objects super tight for a great quality finish so you can transform an everyday common cabinet into one that's special for your wrap shop. So with that, let's start round 17 of the Never Stop Winning Contest. Bam! And here we go. Clock has started. Everything's been cleaned and prepped. Got magnets on hand. Material's been cut ahead of time. So we have four vertical panels, two for the sides, two for the doors, and then we have two horizontal panels. Those for the upper sections you'll see in a little bit. So here using magnets just to kind of release the liner, even though this is a low initial tack. It's always good to kind of set the magnets on just to kind of get a little bit of safe release. Then here dropping the entire liner off, that's called going cowboy. That's because the low initial tack KPMF changed their adhesive recently on their color change film. So it's much more low, uh, friendlier tack initially. So you can kind of just take that backing paper off, reposition it. Now I'm going to show several different styles on how to conform the film on top of those raised objects. Here, without any heat, I'm just taking a Roly Pro and pressing really hard. I actually have the cabinet wedged up against the wall so I can push and the cabinet's not going to move. And the reason why I'm doing this is I tried it earlier with a sample piece and it's always good to take a sample uh, piece of something you've never wrapped before. In this case, I've never wrapped with KPMF with this specialty lamination on. And because of the low initial tack and this cabinet actually has a low surface energy as well, I noticed that if I used heat and then I tried the roller, it would kind of spider because it wouldn't grip on the surface. So I found that if I just installed it without heat with a rolly, I can kind of get it onto the raised objects, then come back in with my application glove, then add heat. And what this is now doing with the application glove is I can really kind of seal it down. And if there's any air left over from the rolly pro, I can definitely kind of work that air out. So this has just been super thorough going back and forth. But again, I wouldn't know this if I didn't test it ahead of time. If I would have tested it with a big piece, I might have to cut a new piece right now. So again, always take a scrap if you have it, play ahead of time, and then dial it in. Speaking of dialing, it's always good to do the black and white before you install. Now the color change film from KPMF, in this case the pearl blue, is around 4 mil thick. And then when you put the lamination on top, which is 60 micron, it becomes over 6 mil thick. So definitely on the thick side, so around those corners, notice I use heat to kind of really make a tight seal, then using heat to seal it on the inside edge. Now keep in mind also there's going to be rubber kind of buffers on the upper corners and the lower corners, so I can make a good clean cut on the upper section. But then here on the back, there's tight metal molding right on the back section here. So I use heat, round the corner to tighten it. Then it did a nice, good tuck and cut right there on the back side here, though. So full coverage. Now with that cut out, I'm going to cut off the material at the top now and angle my blade away from the top right now. So basically kind of creating a flush beveled in cut at the top, mainly because of the thickness of this material. So once the that side is done, flip it around. I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side, but change my techniques up just a little bit. Because again, part of the Never Stop Learning Contest is we try to show different ways to wrap an object just because there's no particular one way is better than another sometimes. It depends on kind of type of material you're using, tools that you have available. So having a wide variety of options is always, always a good idea. So here in this case, instead of using the Roly Pro and doing it without heat, then coming back in with a glove, this time I'm actually wetting the glove and then adding heat and going back and forth. So I'm using four fingers, kind of wide fingers, and you can see how, because of the nature of this material and the surface, surface energy right now after going about I say six or seven inches see how it kind of builds up because I'm working from the top down so right now just kind of just being super patient reading the wrinkles when they start to build up I glass it out at the bottom and repeat so going back and forth go back and forth glass it out repeat so constantly spraying the glove in this particular glove application glove you need to kind of make sure it's wet there's newer ones on the market they just slide and glide without soap and water but either way so just make sure it's sliding so it goes back and forth across the film now all the recessed areas and raised objects are super tight no bubbles so different style of approach there 
click the blade, so do a little relief cut here at the top, swing it around the back side. And again, I mentioned earlier, there's these rubber buffers that are going at the upper corners and lower corners right now. So I can do flush cuts on those corners now, but on the visible section there, tuck and cut on the back side. Same thing here on the bottom side, angle in cut, beveling that cut so it's nice and secure. Same thing here, add heat. Very important to add heat with a thick film on this corner. If I don't add heat, my bridge around that corner, then over time you'll see a big bubble. So that's not good for in terms of quality. So here, making sure it wraps around about that one inch section towards the front there. You got that kind of hinge on the side, so relief cut there. Then basically an angled 90 degree cut right there on the side. Once I make that cut, come to the side, clean cut down there and cut at the top. You got to see right now I'm at 17 minutes. This side actually took a little bit quicker, so that technique in many ways was a little better than the Rolly Pro No Heat, then coming back with application glove. So it's always good to time what you're doing to see if which one's better. So then double check with heat on the side, good to go, rock and roll. So I loosen up the wheels, flip it around, again push it against that wall. Really key to have it on the wall because in this case, you with this type of material, again that low initial tack, you really want to make sure you press nice and hard. And what I love about KPMF now is they definitely change the game in terms of their material and make it much easier to apply. And having that beautiful sparkle lamination on top is great. Specifically, the combination that you're seeing right now is their Atlantic Pearl Gloss Film. That's their color change film. And then what we did at the Rep Institute is we laminated it with the Gloss Pacific Blue Starlight. So by having that good combination, you know, those blue kind of flakes of that lamination kind of highlights the blue underneath. So it creates a really cool, unique look. It's not super loud, but it's really classy and subtle. And that's what I like about having that lamination option where, you know, some manufacturers offer, let's say, a couple, you know, specialty metallic uh, laminations. But in terms of KPMF, they got those four pearls and nine metallics, so a wide variety of options and color of flakes. So you can really create that unique customer customization for your client that, you know, maybe other companies can't offer in that case. So, but keep in mind this over laminate that I did put on this color change film can work with any type of brand. So it is kind of agnostic in that regards. But in this case, obviously, you know, putting on the KPMF color change film, which is definitely a beautiful, beautiful film and this lamination good to go. So now we're getting back to the install portion. So you can see why we had two horizontal pieces for the top and bottom. So this pan panel that I put on right now came a little short on the lower left hand corner, but plus this is a separate section of the cabinet and you'll see why later of where we did a separate piece there. But here basically cold cutting the top and the sides. But in this case, want that blue to go all the way deep inside this door for full coverage. So we get that, you know, obviously the full transformation, taking it from a boring, you know, tool cabinet to one that is, you know, truly blue. So here, fed it into that deep into that gap, making a good, nice, good clean cut here. And just basically a cold flush cut. That's an empty cut now. So it wraps around just a little bit, not necessarily a big high grab point. So you can get away with, you know, just wrapping it right to the edge, cutting it off. Once everything is kind of cut at the top, just always coming back and sealing the deal. And then here, cutting out where the handle is going to be and done. So once that door is done, basically this one's slightly different where I don't have to wrap all the way inside, but basically just going full cowboy right now, tacking at the top, dropping the liner, then coming back in with heat and going with that kind of application glove combination, spray it with soap and water to make sure it's nice and wet and done. So in this case, you know, I think this application style with the glove and soap and water, heat going back and forth is definitely the way to go in terms of conforming on here. We tried different types of rollers with heat and stuff like that. But again, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video, the combination of low tack of the initial surface and the adhesive just didn't quite work out and this seemed like the best approach. So that being said, just nice, thorough, straightforward, systematic, just creating glass whenever those wrinkles build up. Having the squeegee just in case I need to kind of put extra pressure. You can see those wrinkles build up and pick it up, glass it out, tack it on the bottom and that heat going back and forth and done. So super thorough, no, bubble free, cut it flush at the bottom. Then here, always important to pick it up from the hinge, tuck it to the edge, then cut it. So it's a nice, good flush, a deep cut. So you don't come up short. So once that section is done there, always come back and seal the deal with the hard side of the squeegee. Then check the clock. We're at 31 minutes right now. So again, this is one of the reasons why we speeded up this video is just to make sure, you know, you don't want to watch a video for 40 minutes, but you see the nice workflow at this sped up pace, which I like a lot. Again, heat, again, really sticking to my guns in terms of doing the right things, conforming around that corner with heat, tucking it right into that gap around the side. Once it's set up there, have a very sharp blade, pull away with my free hand, cut it on the back, done. Then always come back and seal the deal. So always set up the you know corners with heat, set up the edges with heat and seal, and then always, always double check to make sure you get that super high quality. So it's mostly done at this point, but now we got these horizontal pieces on top and bottom. So in this case, I'm taking bridge line right now, 
because the doors are slightly uneven there and I want to make sure that the blue wraps just a little bit on the inside. So here I tack it to the top. So once I set up the top now, I'm going to come back and heat it. And here right now, I'm really making sure it conforms to that top edge, but it was a little thick. So what I thought was, you know what, I'm actually going to pick it up higher and I'm going to bevel edge cut it at the top. So I try to kind of do a kind of a cutless, you know, section here. But in terms of not using my knife, opposed to just kind of a pre-cut piece that fits plus knifeless tape, but in this case, adapting as I go, because I always want to read the material. If the material is grumpy, definitely don't want to force it. So here at the top, you'll see this nice beveled in cut right there. So angle my blade in, cut flush, pull away with my free hand. Now take the knifeless tape, cut it, and I'm going to take it in about a half inch right now along the top right there. So knifeless tape comes in really handy for these type of sections. Got the clock ticking right now. Once I get that full coverage of the top, I like it because A, it looks a lot better and is really durable in case someone, you know, kind of grabs the top of the cabinet. And then here at the bottom, this is a nice pre-cut piece where I definitely don't need the knifeless tape set up here. Basically going to flush cut the edge here, cut it flush at the bottom, cut it flush on the side, and here cut it, angle it right where the hinge is. So what this means is once I make cuts on left and the right right now, I can open the doors, and once I open the doors, that top section will wrap under about a quarter inch. So I peel it back so the doors can, uh, the material can slide right in that top section, feeds it in just for that super high quality, and done. Now the last little bit here is just making the cutouts for the door handle and where the keyhole goes. Now once that's set up, coming back in with my glove, and always, always really important to finish strong, basically do a 360, and I'm just going to go over all the edges with heat to make sure they're super tightened down, look for any bubbles, but I was pretty thorough during the install, but it's you never assume that it's perfect. Always want to make sure you come back and do that heat check. Only takes a few seconds, but it ensures that long-term quality. And that means I am done, and I'm going to hit stop now. So with that, the cabinet is complete. And if you're closest to the winning time, 41 minutes and 57 seconds, congratulations. You've just won a free roll of color change film from KPMF. And you can transform your car or a client's car now in amazing colors, which is awesome. That's the name of the game of the Never Stop Learning Contest. So if you won the prize, awesome. But also, if you watch the video, you've just picked up a lot of good tips and tricks on how to transform a boring tool cabinet to one that's super exciting. Keep in mind, this is now going to be a kind of our sticker bomb cabinet. So if you come to the Rap Institute Center in Munich for a workshop, please bring a sticker and you can throw it on the cabinet. We hope to fill this up in short time. So again, this is the Never Stop Learning Contest Round 17. Thank you to KPMF for sponsoring and thank you for taking part. Cheers.